Thanks to the Home Depot Seeds program, we're looking at the Wave Series Alpha Bidet. And for those of you who are picky about your country of origin products, this one's made in Korea. Opening the box reveals a T-valve, some batteries, some nuts and bolts, and a bracket, a piece of broken foam, a three-prong power cord, and the bidet itself. So let's take the foam out and see what it actually looks like. Out of the box, we see our supply hose, instruction manual, one page, and what I think is a very oversized remote control unit. Here's one from another vendor for a bidet, and it's much smaller. So this is the size of, you know, one of these modern big cell phones that they sell today. Uh, but it looks like it comes with a cradle that you could stick on to a piece of furniture so that you have access to this quite easily. Um, here's the attachment for water. You have some controls on the side so that you don't need this to do the basic functions. So there are a lot more elaborate functions with the remote control. Like all toilets, it has a seat that goes up, some warnings on the back side. This is the actual unit that heats up the water. Toilet seat, and let's see if we can show you the underside. And it's a no slam toilet seat, which is nice. Um, here's where the nozzle comes out that will spray warm water. And I know you can control um, temperature setting and I believe pressure for this. You also, you can control whether it's, it waters the front or the back. And if you've never had a bidet, your first time will be shocking. But after that, you will fall in love with it. So we're going to uh, install this unit. Oh, it also will dry your bottom. There's where the warm air comes out to dry you off after being washed. But before we can install this, a couple of things you need to know. One, you're going to need an electrical outlet somewhere near your toilet. It can't be too far because the cord isn't that long. So it's generally going to have to be right in this area. In our case, we recently just added one there. So that's going to make it easy to do that installation. Your toilet is going to have to have a water line that has a valve that you can shut off. It's easily accessible, otherwise you're going to have to shut off the whole house. And finally, we need to clean and disinfect the toilet seat and bowl before we actually work with it. So that's where these chemicals are going to come in. So once you're done with that, then we'll proceed to take the seat out and do our installation. We have now disinfected the toilet seat in its entirety, the bowl on the inside and the outside, though that needs to be flushed. Quick tip before you do the flush, you might as well close the valve since you're going to have to drain this tank. So this is a perfect time to get a two-in-one deal. You get to drain the tank and you get to clean your bathroom bowl. As you flush, you'll want to hold it down so that you empty the entire tank. With the tank drained, the next step is to go underneath and find this bolt and nut. Now if you're lucky it'll be plastic and most of the new ones are plastic and so it should come off by hand. If it's metal then it may be rusted or corroded on. That could be more challenging so you may or may not need a tool to undo this. I'm hoping that since this is plastic and it's only been in here a couple of years this should unthread fairly easy. Sometimes if you go to tighten it, then try to loosen it, it'll help it break loose. And there we go. One down, one to go.
with the plastic nuts removed, lower the seat, lift up from the back, and it should come right out. I would advise you to keep the seat because if you move, if you decide that the bidet isn't for you, you can always come back to your seat. For the next part, we're going to need some towels to protect the floor because we're going to get a little wetness because we're going to have to disconnect from the toilet tank. So up here. And again, this may be plastic, this may be metal, this may be corroded on, it may not. All you're going to have to do is release from up here. You don't want to release from the valve because what we're going to do is we're going to put that T-valve up here and then connect this line back to the bottom of the T-valve and then we'll have a line coming to the toilet seat to feed it. Anyway, so this should just turn by hand. Again, if it doesn't, you may need a tool, but as you see here, it's coming out, and yes, there is some residual water, and that's why it's important to have some towels. Otherwise, you may have to face the wrath of the missus. And you know how that can be. Here's the T-valve. This end is going to go towards your toilet tank, but it needs this little gasket, and you see how it's sort of a cone? One side is narrower than the other. That narrow side needs to go face up towards your tank. And then no Teflon is needed. You just hand tighten this. Make sure that the side is pointed forward and then the bottom will connect with the line that you already have there. If your valve is anything like my valve, you'll have a bit of a leak running. And even though I fully closed it, you know, these are just, they're cheap. So um, you'll probably want to install the hose so at least you can force the water into here while you do the rest of the installation. And again, you won't need any Teflon tape. It simply fits over the end and you just hand tighten. Now we move on to assembling the mounting plate. You're going to need a bracket, mounting bracket, a mounting bolt. That's going to go in this way. And there are teeth that match up on the side to keep this from moving. The bolt's going to drop through. After the bolt drops through, you have a rubber washer that's going to go into it and with the cone side facing down then you're going to have a flat washer and then finally the nut that attaches and this is all plastic you just hand tighten this and that should secure this bracket so that you can slide on the seat afterwards you'll notice that the cone washer goes in first with the cone and the narrow end pointed up and then if you put the flat washer together with it, it'll actually hold it in place for you. Here's what we have on top. The idea here is to center this on the toilet rim so that when you put your seat on it, it isn't too far off to the right or too far off to the left. This doesn't come with a template to help you adjust for that. So you sort of have to just eyeball it yourself. Of course you have the holes in the seat where the bolts are dropping into and then you can adjust this bracket left and right. A tip that might help you with alignment is if you count the number of notches left and right and up and down that might help you center up at least mathematically. Uh, once you're happy with the positioning then you just hand tighten these as much as you can and then we're ready for the next step which is sliding the seat over oh by the way on this plate there are some uh, black strips on the back side and those of course are going to face down so that they can grip onto the porcelain surface and not slide looking at the bottom of our toilet seat here's where the brackets are going to slide into that bracket plate and there's no 
markings on this to help you align. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little mark by placing a marking where the bracket plate needs to line up so it can slide in. It just makes it a little bit easier to guide it in because you're only looking from the back side and there's no reference. So just make your own reference. And you can use stickers. I, I used a marker. No one's ever going to see these marks anyway. Make sure the power cord is out of the way. Check your alignment marks. And it should go in. And you should hear a click. Well, I didn't hear a click, did you? But it's not coming back out. So at this point, you want to check for alignment. Is the seat top too far forward, too far back? Is the seat too far to the right or too far to the left? And this one looks like it's pretty much where I want it to be. And I'm happy with that. There's just a little bit of lip, but I'm okay. So I can finish tightening the bolts underneath so that it doesn't move. And yes, the instructions say you're supposed to get a click when you slide it into position over the mounting brackets. But we didn't. But it doesn't pull out. I'm pulling on it. Okay, so now one of the final steps is to take our hose and attach it. And it goes right here. There's also a, a filter on that, that little piece that's sticking out. If you pull on that, that'll actually remove the water filter. You want to leave that in place, but if you get a lot of minerals and sand and particles in your water, then you may want to occasionally remove the supply hose, take out that filter and just flush it out. This will tend to want to fly out. We can control that by loosening the connection and turning the hose in the opposite direction so it comes up against the bowl and then tightening this because these are two separate pieces. So you can make that adjustment. I'll need two hands to do it. With our connection tightened, there, 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 we are ready to turn on the valve or in this case, it's been leaking, so we're just going to open it up some more. And we hear the water starting to flow into the tank. At this point, we're going to look to see if there are any leaks. And if there are, we simply just tighten the connection. Unfortunately for me, it doesn't leak here, 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 or here. It's leaking down here. So I'm going to have to replace that valve. It's a PEX line coming in, so, you know, it's a run to the big box store. It's a pain in the butt. But everything else is not leaking. That's good. Let's plug this in. Power cord feeds off the right side. You have about four feet of cord to plug in. We're going to insert it in. You heard it make a beep. Water is coming into the reservoir. Yes, there is a little reservoir there where the water warms up. There's also a seat warmer that you can set. So for cold winter mornings. Let's see if I can show you the nozzle. That's the nozzle that comes out to do the washing. Right now it's going through a self-cleaning mode, but it is able to oscillate and spray both your front and your back, not simultaneously, but as choices. Things to know about the remote control, it takes three AA batteries 
that go in this little knockout here. Uh, batteries are included. There's a caddy which you can screw onto the wall or you can tape. The remote slides into the caddy and is held in by the, these tabs at the lower bottom. So I've seen other units where they actually use a magnet to help secure it in place. Uh, that would have been nice. Again, it's a big unit, so here, here's, it's almost as big as the toilet roll dispenser, toilet paper dispenser. Of course, you know, if you're using a bidet, maybe you don't need one of those anymore, and it could go right here. Some of the features, the stop button. You'll want to know where that is the first time you use this, because if you've never been on a bidet, you'll probably hit stop until you get used to it. Second or third time, you probably won't. Rear. That's for most people when they go into the bathroom and need to be clean. It's the rear button. If you go to rear plus, that's more powerful spray. Oh, by the way, if you hit rear and then you hit it again, the valve will oscillate. So it'll do kind of front and back of the back area. And then there's a front button. This is for the females. And it also has, if you press it again, oscillation. Then you have a dry button that turns on a blower that will dry you off. The nozzle position, this will extend the nozzle further forward or back. Then you have the pulse, which if you're sitting on the toilet, it will cause the water to pulse. If you're not sitting on the toilet, it'll cause the LED light to come on or off. There's child mode, which provides lower temperatures and lower pressure. There's the nozzle cleaning mode. If you push this, the nozzle will clean itself for about three minutes. And then there's a power saving mode. Finally, on the far right side, we can set our seat temperature. It cycles through five different settings. Same for the water temperature. Then to the left of that, we can set spray pressure, five different settings, and the air dry temperature, five different settings. The remote lets you operate everything from the comfort of your lap or from its handy wall caddy. On the side of the unit, you can manually control the rear washing. You can stop it. And you can apply power and do the power saving mode. This is just a pickup sensor for the remote. And for those of you who are wondering about the valve, I didn't have to replace it. I simply tightened this nut here and it stopped leaking. Why would you want a bidet as opposed to using that to clean yourself all the time? Well, one reason is that you don't need that to clean yourself every time if you have a bidet. It actually washes off that area that needs to be cleansed with warm water at temperatures you select. And it'll even dry you off afterwards. If you desire, you're still free to pat yourself dry with toilet paper. But in either case, you'll realize quick savings on toilet paper because you just either not use it or use a lot less of it. It's a much more natural way of cleaning yourself because you're actually clean at the bottom when you're done. You're not smearing things on and off as you might be with toilet paper. Anyway, I don't want to get any more graphic than that, but this is just a great way of practicing personal hygiene and while it's rare that we see this in America, it's very popular throughout the world. And it's getting to the point now where these are available almost everywhere and people are starting to discover them. Give it a try. I, I guarantee the first time you won't like it. The second or third time, by the fourth time, I guarantee that you'll be a convert to the bidet and you won't go back to that old fashioned toilet seat. Some pros and cons to this bidet. First one, it's very easy to install. Didn't have any problems with it. You just gotta make sure that you have an electrical outlet that's within four feet. And 
that you have a way of shutting off the valve so that you can install the hose lines and the T-valve. No tools are necessary. Again, it makes it really easy. You have manual controls, so you're not always relying on the 15-button oversized remote. Here's another remote for your TV, which has, you know, closer to 40-some-odd buttons. And even that's smaller than this remote. So I think this remote could have been better. It just makes it kind of clunky and awkward to reach because you're limited to where you can put stuff in a bathroom to begin with. And it's just too big and it's too horizontal. And the fact that this cradle, if you want to take it out, you have to move it up and out. It's not like magnetically held in place. Not a good thing. Besides not liking the remote, I think the back lid cover just seems way too high. And I have a different bidet in which it's hinged further forward so the height isn't as severe. You know, it's just a visual thing, doesn't affect function, but I prefer it if it was a little lower. I also find because of that, that this thing looks visually not great. It looks like a big hunk of plastic is in the way. It's obviously all concealed when you close the cover, which is a nice thing, but when it's open, it's just not the prettiest bidet in the world. Functionally, it does everything you'd want it, and you get premium features like the ability to set it for children, which I think is great. That's lower temperature, lower water pressure. Besides the child's mode, I also like the fact that it has a nozzle cleaning function. My other unit, when you hit the clean function, the nozzle comes out and you physically have to clean it. This one actually washes itself, though you might want to disinfect it occasionally, but still, it'll wash itself for three minutes, and I think that's a, a really nice premium feature for this product. Uh, what I don't like is, again, this interface. It's just a little bit too complex, especially for guests and visitors who are new to a bidet or to the Alpha bidet. Another pro, the no slam seat and lid. Don't know if you can see it on camera, but the LED light actually flickers, which can be annoying, but again, how much time do we spend staring at the bowl? If you found this interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team, and help keep commercials out of these videos. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.